Section 4.5 discusses the properties of logarithms. So here's a summary of the properties of logarithms. We're gonna go over each of these individually, but I wanted to have them located in one place um, so that when you're working on the homework or studying for the exam, you have them all together. So let's talk about the logarithm of one. So as long as x is greater than zero, y is greater than zero, and a is greater than zero with a not equal to one, for any real number r, the following properties hold. Log base a of one is always gonna be zero. Well, why is that? Well, remember that if I had, say, log base two of one was zero, that's telling me two to the zero power is one. And that's one of our exponent rules, right? Like any number greater than zero, um, as long as it's raised to the zero power equals one. So that's why we have this logarithm of one rule. Next, we have base a of logarithm a. It says that log base a of a is one. Well, let's think about that. If I had log base two of two, that's asking me what power do I raise two to to get two? Well, that would be one, right? Because two to the first power is one and any number to the first power is one. Sorry, two to the first power is two. Any number raised to the first power is itself misspeak of the century. Two to the first power is two, a to the first power is a. That's taking a times itself one time. Next we have our power property. So if I have log base a of x to the r, that's going to be r of log base a x. Okay, let me get creative. If I have log base two of two cubed, that's really like saying I have log base two of eight 2 raised to the third power gives us 8, so log base 2 of 8 is 3. I know it's my favorite example. What if I took 3 times log base 2? We use this rule. We move our exponent to the front. Log base 2 of 2. That would give me 3 times log base 2 of 2, which we just learned is 1, which is 3. So we'd get the exact same answer. And this might not be super necessary when we've got log base 2 of 2 cubed, which is 8. But what if I had log base 2 of um, 2 to the 39th, right? That would be really messy. So it'd be great to move that exponent to the front, and I would get 39 log base 2 of 2, which is just going to be 39 times 1, which is 1. 39. Guys, it's late on a Thursday. I'm recording these before I teach tomorrow. I feel bad that they haven't been coming early. So I wanted to get this ready for you guys because we have an exam next week. Friendly reminder, because the natural log of E, because natural log is log base E of E, the natural log of E is gonna give us one. So this is our friendly little reminder also, if I had log of 10, remember if I have log without a base, we mean that's log base 10, that would also equal one. So let's find the value of each expression. So I have log base seven of seven to the 29th. Remember I can move that exponent to the front. So I get 29 log base seven of seven, which is 29 times one, which is one. Log base two of two is one. Log base two of eight cubed, we can move that exponent to the front. So I have three times log base two of eight. Well, that gives me three times log base two of eight, which is also three, so I have nine. Next, I have the natural log of e to the square root of two. I move that to the front. Square root of two times the natural log of e, which is just one. Square root of two is my final answer. Next, we have our product and our quotient property. If I have log base a times of x times y, that's the same as log base a of x plus log base a of y. And this makes sense. Remember, if I have a logarithm, what I'm getting back out is the exponent. And if I was to say multiply 
two exponents, what we do is we add their powers. So because these are the exponents, it makes sense that we should add them. Same thing with the quotient property, right? If I have log base a of x over y, that's log base a of x minus log base a of y. And that makes sense as well. Why? Well, because when I'm dividing exponents, what I'm doing is I'm subtracting their powers. So that's why the quotient property works. So let's find the value of each expression. If I have log base 8 of 2 plus log base 8 of 4, what we're going to do is multiply them together. That gives me log base 8 of 2 times 4, which is log base 8 of 8, which is 1. If I have log base 6 of 9 plus log base 6 of 7, that's log base 6 of 9 times 4, which is log base 6 of 36, which is 2, because two, 6 squared is 2. If I have log base 5 of 35 minus log base 5 of 7, that's going to be log base 5 of 35 divided by 7, which would give me log base 5 of 5, which is 1. And if I have log base 16 minus log base 8 of 16 minus log base 8 of 2, that gives me log base 8 of 16 divided by 2, which is log base 8 of 8, which is again going to give us 1. Next, I want us to talk about logarithms as exponents. So if I have a to the log base a of m, that's going to equal m. Okay, maybe we work through a really tiny example. So if I had 2 to the log base 2 of 4, right? Well, that's 2, log base 2 of 2 is, log base 2 of 4 is 2, so I get 2 squared, which is indeed 4. So that's why this property works. So if I have e to the natural log of 8, that's just going to be 8. If I have 9 to the natural log of 13, that's just going to be 13. If I have 4 to the log of 4 base 6 minus log base 4 of 5, that we need to rewrite using our quotient property. That gives me 4 log base 4 of 6 divided by 5, so my answer is just 6 fifths. And if I have 5 to the log base 5 of 6 plus log base 5 of 7, that's, we need to use the product property, 5 log base 5 of 6 times 7, which is 42, right? Answer is just 42. Let's talk about the change of base formula. Okay, so if a, b, and a and b don't equal 1, and m are positive real numbers, then if I have log base 8, a of m, that's the same as log base b of m over log base b of a. From this, we can also get that log base b of a times log base a of m is log base b of m. So if I have log base 2 of 6 times log base 6 of 8, that becomes log base 2 of 8, which is 3. If I have log base 3 of 8 times log base 8 of 9, that gives me log base 3 of 9, which is 2. 